Hello and welcome to edupediaworld.com. Today we are going to study about construction economics. Now first of all we will know what do you mean by economics. So it's a study of resources, scarcity and the consequent choices necessary to satisfy the needs of the consumers. Then why do we need to study economics? The answer is very simple as it helps to answer the basic questions like what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. We just get a rough idea that whatever we are doing, we are doing for who? Who are going to benefit from this production and what all the needs we have to provide for them. Now we will study about scarcity. We are having limited resources and we are having unlimited wants too. We need all the things in the world, but do we have the money to buy them? No. So these two factors, the limited resources and the unlimited wants dominate our lives. These two facts define scarcity, which is a condition in which the resources available are insufficient to satisfy our wants. We are therefore faced with a greater problem. That is, at any point in time, there is a fixed stock of resources set against many wants. This problem is formally referred to as scarcity. Like we go to our supermarket, we go for the grocery shop, we buy something. But can we buy the whole stock of grocery which is available in the supermarket? No. Why? Because we do want to buy them but our resource that's money it's limited so we are having unlimited ones but our resources are limited this is what a scarcity is for an individual resources include time money and a skill for a country limited resources include natural resources capital labor force and technology so because of scarcity people and economies must make decisions over how to allocate their resources. Economics, in turn, aims to study why we make these decisions and how we allocate our resources most efficiently. Now we are going to study about resources. So it can be defined as the inputs used in the production of those things that we desire. Resources as factors of production to highlight the fact that only by combining various factors, goods and services can be produced. And these factors of production are first labor, land, capital, being an entrepreneur. So labor. Labor is the time and the effort that we devote to produce the goods and the services. Without labor, nothing is possible. If we are not devoting our time, then how can we produce any goods or services? So for the production of goods and services, labor is the must. We are giving the land, which is the gifts of nature, that we use to produce goods and services like air, water, land, minerals, etc. Capital. Now capital is the goods that we have produced and that we can now use to produce other goods and services. It includes interstate highways, building, dams and projects, airports, jets, car production lines, etc. It also includes human capital, which is the knowledge and skill that people obtain from education and on the job training. Means if a uh, master's degree holder is there, so he's also a capital for the company because he's having the knowledge on how to execute the project. So for the company, even that human is also a capital. Entrepreneur. It is the resources that organizes labor, land and capital. Without an entrepreneur, the resources can't be organized means like he's like the leader to us. Entrepreneurs make business decisions, bear the risk that arise from these decisions and come up with new ideas about what, how, when and where to produce. Let's take the example of Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook. He came up with the new ideas and he knew where to execute his plan. Now he's one of the richest men in the world. So that's what entrepreneur does. He organizes the labor, the land and the capital. He utilizes it in a very efficient manner. Now we will see what is the opportunity cost. 
So from the term opportunity cost, it's somewhat clear that when a choice is made, some other thing that is also desired has to be foregone. In other words, in a world of scarcity, for every want that is satisfied, some other want or wants remain unsatisfied. Like in the breakfast, we can't have apple also, bread also, milk also, orange also, each other thing. So if you are having apple, they have to forego the orange. So that's the opportunity cost. Choosing one thing inevitably requires giving up something else. An opportunity has been missed or foregone. That is the opportunity cost. So one definition of opportunity cost is the value of the alternative foregone by choosing a particular activity. For example, construction firms deciding which projects to proceed with. This way of thinking emphasizes that whenever an economic decision is made, there is a trade-off between the use of one resource for one or more alternative uses. Like we are having a fixed labor. Now, we need those labor for the plastering work also and for the materials transportation also. So we will see which whatever thing is necessary, either the plastering or the material shifting work. So having those material shifting or the plastering work and leaving the other work, that is the opportunity cost. Like if we are preferring for plastering, then the material shifting work which has been missed is the opportunity cost for plastering. So from an economic viewpoint, the value of a trade-off is the real cost or opportunity cost of the decision. For example, the apple and the orange. Like I said earlier, if you are selecting the apple, the orange is the opportunity cost. So orange is the missed part. We can't have two. We have to select between these two things. So selection of one thing over the another is the opportunity cost. Now we will see an example. Like if I'm going to a one hour concert and pays 200 euros for a ticket. And option two is I can work as a salesman earning 30 euros per hour. Option third is I can work as a tutor earning 100 euros per hour. So the full cost of attending the concert will be the price of the ticket plus the income foregone means I paid the ticket also but for that period of time the highest value which is foregone like I can be a tutor also for those one hour or I can be a salesman for those one hour but the highest value is of being a tutor because 100 euros I can earn but I'm not able to earn that 100 euro so that income is foregone so that 100 euros will also be my full cost of attending the concert so full cost of attending the concert will be 200 euros which i paid for the ticket and the 100 euros which can be earned as a tuition to someone other so 300 euros will be the full cost of attending the concert thank you